What is going on college basketball fans? Today we have my final power rankings of the season. The regular season is over. We're getting into the postseason with the conference tournaments and I am hyped for it. I just want to say real quick, subscribe if you guys are new. We have daily college basketball March Madness coverage coming out here on the channel. You don't want to miss it. Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed. And yeah guys, let's get started. All right, so this week we have a power 50. We're doing my top 50 rankings for the final one of the season. All year long, I've been doing my power 35. Let's add 15 teams for the final rankings of the season. So let's get into it at the number one spot still. Over the last few weeks, I've had them there. We do have the Houston Cougars, and they picked up a good win on the road at Memphis um, on a last second shot by Jamal Shedd. And that was huge because my number two and my number three both lost this week, but I still believe that Kansas, Alabama are still, you know, top tier teams this season. Kansas lost on the road to Texas. Alabama lost on the road to Texas A&M. Both really good teams, the two seeds in their leagues. Um, and I, I kind of felt like Alabama, they were going to drop one here soon. So it's almost better that they dropped one um, to end the year and not in the conference tournament. Now they can kind of refocus and, and try to win their conference tournament there because they've been kind of walking a tightrope against teams like Auburn, South Carolina, and, and it kind of felt like they were going to drop one soon. So maybe that can kind of get them together. Kansas, they didn't really need that win against Texas. They already had the one seed in the Big 12 locked up. Could You could say that they weren't really trying as hard in this one, but I just think Texas, they wanted it more on that day because they were fighting for the two seed. But I still think Kansas, Alabama, they are very dangerous come March, and they are still number two and number three in my power rankings. At number four, definitely deserves the number four spot now as they defeated Arizona this week. They were actually my number four, I think the past two weeks ahead of Purdue, and they are staying there for this week. They are on a pretty good win streak, um, and UCLA is playing great. Jamie Hawkes has been on a tear lately. I think he's one of the more underrated stars in college basketball and definitely a guy who can take over March Madness. At number five, I do have Purdue still sitting there at number five. Yeah, they've been losing a little bit lately, um, quite a bit actually, um, but over the course of the season, they are definitely a top five team. They're coming in here at number five. Staying here at number six, I do have Marquette. They're one of the hottest teams in the country. You know, they had some close ones against teams like St. John's recently, but still, they're picking up W's, um, and like I said, they're one of the hottest teams in the country. They have not uh, been losing very often uh, recently. Them and UCLA, very, very hot teams right now. At number seven, I do have Texas. They picked up a big win over Kansas this week. They also lost to TCU this week, and they're up one spot here at number seven. Um, at number eight, we do have Arizona, and they kind of swap places with Texas this week because Arizona did lose to UCLA. Texas beat Kansas. I, I swapped them out a little bit. I think Texas... They played amazing in that Kansas game. They really wanted that one. Can't wait to see both these teams play in the conference tournament. At number nine, I do have Gonzaga. They have been very, very hot as of late. And Gonzaga, they definitely deserve to be in the top 10 at this point. Um, tearing it up, defeating, <laughs> blowing out teams left and right there. And Gonzaga up at number nine, playing very, very good basketball right now. At number 10, I do have Kansas State, and Kansas State, they are playing really good, and honestly, 10 is where it starts to get weird. I feel very good about my top 9, but 10, really all the way to 50, there's a lot of teams that you could swap out for each other, so you guys are going to have to let me know, but this is ultimately what I came down to. I spent a lot of times trying to decide where I wanted each team, but I just decided to put Kansas State here at number 10. They did lose on the road to West Virginia um, just a couple days ago. But Kansas State, they've also been playing really good. You know, they swept Baylor on the season. Um, they've been playing pretty good basketball as of late. Before that West Virginia loss, they've won like three in a row or something like that. 
and Kansas State. They're up here at 10. That's where I decided to put them. At number 11, I did put Miami, and I know that they lost to Florida State, but that was on a buzzer beater. And if you take that Florida State loss away, Miami has been pretty dominant and haven't lost very many games. They beat Pitt by a couple of points the other day. Um, not that long ago, they destroyed Duke. Like Miami has been playing really good on the year. And if you take away that Florida State loss, they've been, you know, pretty dominant as of late and winning a lot of games. So Miami is up here at number 11 here for me. At number 12 and number 13, we'll talk about them together. The reason I do have Xavier above UConn right now is because Xavier did sweep UConn on the season. But both of these teams are kind of getting hot right now. Xavier, they're on like a three or four game win streak. UConn, um, they're on a really big win streak. Actually, I think like five, six six games if I'm not mistaken they did drop one on the road to Creighton they only lost that one by three points but over the course of their um you know last 10 games or so they've been on a tear and UConn and Xavier both pretty hot right now they're up at 12 and 13 at number 14 I do have St. Mary's they did take that loss to Gonzaga but other than that they have been running through like every team in the West Coast Conference they're actually kind of underrated like there are some really good teams in that league it's not just a cupcake walk St. Mary's is up here at number 14 very much looking forward to St. Mary's Gonzaga round three, hopefully in the West Coast uh, Tournament Championship. Hopefully we get to see that because that would be amazing. At number 15, we get uh, to Tennessee. Tennessee, you know, they've been on and off lately. They destroyed Arkansas, but then they go uh, back and, and lose to Auburn. Auburn is a very tough place to play at. They're in the jungle, but Tennessee coming in here at number 15. They have really good wins on the season, like against Texas, against Kansas. Um, so Tennessee, they're in here at number 15. At number 16, I do have Virginia, and Virginia, I, I'm looking forward to seeing how they do in the ACC tournament. I think that that could determine a lot based on, on where they get seeded. If they lose like their first game of the ACC tournament, I could see Virginia, you know, falling to like maybe a four or even a five seed in the tournament. So that's going to be huge for them. But Virginia, they're down here at number 16 for me right now. At number 17, I do have the Baylor Bears. And Baylor, they dropped two this week, one to Kansas State and, and, and one to Iowa State. And that Iowa State team that they lost to pretty badly at home, a home game for Baylor. And Keontae George is back now. Iowa State has been struggling a lot, and I know they made some cuts. They cut Caleb Grill off the team. Maybe that was the reason, you know, kind of gave them a little bit of a boost for that game. But Baylor losing that badly at home to the that Iowa State team that's been struggling, they, they had to drop. They had to drop down here to number 17 here for me. Um, but like I said, I think 10 through like 18 are really close. And really the bad week that Baylor had this week, uh, they, they had to fall because of all these teams being so close right now. At number 18, we do have Indiana. And Indiana, you know, I could see arguments for them being higher. I could see arguments for them being lower, honestly. But I think 18 is a good spot for them right now. Um, just they had that stretch where they were doing really, really well. They swept Purdue on the season. So they've had their really good uh, wins um, but then you look at like their conference record and stuff like that they are tied with Northwestern they only have one more win than teams like Michigan State Iowa Maryland all those teams so I could see arguments for them to be lower um, they didn't really perform well in their non-con games against teams like Arizona and Kansas so I think 18 I think it's a good spot for Indiana and that's where I have them coming in here uh, for these rankings at number 19 we do have San Diego State San Diego State, they did take a loss to Boise, um, but I still think they are definitely the best team in the Mountain West. Uh, they drop a couple of spots, but they're still up here in the top 20 at number 19. At number 20, we do have Texas A&M. Texas A&M picked up a massive win against Alabama this week. They've been killing it in conference play. Um, put some respect on the Aggies. Let's put them up here at number 20. 
At number 21, we do have the Duke Blue Devils. They've been playing really good as of late. They might be the hottest team in the ACC heading into the conference tournament. Um, so looking forward to seeing how they do. They're in at 21. At number 22, we do have Missouri. Missouri's actually picked up like three wins in a row now against like the bottom feeders of the SEC. But still good that they have been winning games and they do have really good wins over teams like uh, Kentucky, Iowa State that are below them in my ranking. So I think Missouri deserves this spot up here at this point. They're up here at number 22. At number 23, we do have the Creighton Blue Jays. They did, they did have a 2-0 week this week, although it was against Georgetown and DePaul. Um, again, getting good wins over the bottom feeders in their conference. But um, Creighton, they have a lot of potential, um, but I don't think I can put them any higher than 23 at this point. At number 24, we do have the Kentucky Wildcats. They're up, actually, um, a little bit. They've been playing really good. They picked up a amazing win over Arkansas, really uh, dominated them. They did lose to Vandy before that, but they've been playing pretty good basketball as of late. Um, I, I'm not sure, you know, if uh, Kassan, Kassan Wallace and, and Wheeler are coming back uh, for the SEC tournament, but that's going to be huge if they can get them back, especially with the momentum they've been building. Um, Antonio Reeves has been playing amazing. He had an amazing game against Arkansas, but Kentucky, they're up here at number 24. They've been playing really good basketball as of late. At number 25, I do have TCU, and TCU, you know, they lost to Kansas, uh, but they beat Texas this week. Um, and, and then they went on and they lost to, they lose to Oklahoma State, I think. No, they lost to Oklahoma. They lost to Oklahoma the, this week after beating Texas. So just kind of up and down. The Big 12 tournament is going to be crazy because everyone is beating everyone right now. So TCU, they're coming in here at 25. I do think they are a top 25 team, but they're just so up and down in this crazy, crazy league. At number 26, we do have Providence. Providence had maybe one of the worst weeks out of any team in college basketball. 0-2 week, they lost to Xavier at home, and then they lost to Seton Hall and got destroyed by Seton Hall. I could not believe it, but Providence needed that one. We'll see if they get woke up here. I think think Ed Cooley's going to get on them and um, they will be pre prepared for the Big East tournament but they're in here at 26. At number 27 I do have Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts and FAU coming in here at number 28. Both of these mid-major teams I think even if they lost their conference tournament they may be deserving at large bid. They've been playing that good. They're up here at number 27 and number 28. At number 29 I do have Iowa State. Like I said if it wasn't you know Iowa State they lost to West Virginia. Got swept by West Virginia on the season. Lost to them in Ames and then bounced back with a massive win over Baylor. Maybe cutting Caleb Grill was the the spark plug that they needed to to really get things back together because they were on like a three or four game losing streak there and it was not looking good um, but they do drop out of the top 25 for me down at 29 um, but a, a big win over Baylor very excited to see if they can continue that momentum because they have a rematch with Baylor first round of the Big 12 tourney at number 30 I do have the Pitt Panthers they had a 0-2 week this week and they lost to Notre Dame that's a terrible loss, and, and then they went and lost to um, Miami on the road, but in a very close one, so I don't fault them too much for that one, but the Notre Dame loss was horrible. I could see arguments for Pitt being a little bit lower, but I do have them coming in here at number 30. At number 31, I do have Boise State. Boise State, they did take a loss this week to Utah State, another really good team there in the Mountain West on the road. They split with them on the season, um, but Boise State, a really good team, definitely deserves to be in the top 35 or so. At number 32, I do have Northwestern, and honestly, these this is kind of where it gets crazy. I mean, anywhere from 29, 30 to 50, you could swap a few of these teams out. It gets a little bit crazy right here, <laughs> but... 32 is Northwestern, and uh, the main reason it gets kind of crazy here is because all of these Big Ten teams that are in the 30 to 50 range are all beating each other, so they're all kind of intermingled, and you could swap a lot of them around probably, but this is ultimately what I came up with working on all these Big Ten teams and working other 
leagues in here as well uh, of teams that deserve spots here in this top 50. But Northwestern, I have them as my third ranked Big Ten team coming in here at number 32. Um, 33, I do have NC State. 34, I do have Michigan State. And it's it would take a lot of explaining to do with these teams because, like I said, all these Big Ten teams kind of beat each other. So a lot of this is just kind of going off of eye tests and how I feel they have been playing um, as of late along with, like, records, stuff like that. So head-to-heads for 30 through 50 are kind of getting pushed aside a lot because, like I said, they're all kind of beating each other, so it's kind of impossible to do that. Um, but Michigan State coming in here at number 34. WVU coming in here at number 35. They had an amazing week, one of the best weeks out of anyone in college basketball. Like It definitely had to be they defeated Iowa State on the road, then came home and defeated Kansas State at home 2-0 and week and solidifies their spot in the March Madness Tournament. At number 36, I do have Memphis. They, like I said earlier, they lost to Houston at home on a last second shot. I don't fault them too much for that. And other than the two Houston losses uh, recently, Memphis has been winning a lot of games recently, so they're in here at number 36. At number 37, I have Utah State. I think they're being a little bit slept on. A lot of people have them on their bubble right now. I definitely think they deserve a spot in March Madness this year. They're in here at number 37. At number 38, I do have Nevada, um, another really good Mountain West team there for you, uh, like Utah State. Those two played each other twice on the season. They split. Um, they're both very close. I have Utah State right ahead of the Wolfpack. At number 39, I do have Iowa, and Iowa is like the most confusing team in the most confusing conference, which is the Big Ten. And I say this all the time, Iowa can beat you know, any team, especially in the Big Ten, they can lose to any team in the Big Ten. It just depends on how they de decide to play. You know, they can turn it on like that, like they showed in that comeback against Michigan State. Or, you know, they can just not never turn it on and they can get upset by a lot of teams. So Iowa is very scary, and but they're in here at number 39 for me. At number 40, I do have the Maryland Terps. And Maryland, you know, they're another team that's kind of confusing. Sometimes they get hot, they can get on a three or four game win streak, and sometimes they can get on a three or four game losing streak. It's kind of weird, but they are in here at number 40. Illinois is another weird team. Um, I feel like they haven't been playing too great against some of these top teams in the Big Ten. Um, but I do have them here at 41. They do have really good wins on the season against UCLA, against uh, Texas, which are two top 10 teams for me. So that just goes to show they have that type of potential. But I, I don't know. As of late, I just haven't really been feeling Illinois. But they still make the top 50 here at 41, and they will be in March Madness. At number 42, we do have the Auburn Tigers, and Auburn, they picked up a big win over Tennessee this week, and it's looking like they are going to be a March Madness team. At number 43, I do have the Arkansas Razorbacks. They had a pretty bad week this week, um, just did not perform at all against Tennessee, got destroyed by them, and Arkansas, just last week, were my top sleeper heading into March Madness, but right now, I just... That kind of killed them for me. I, I don't see them going far in March Madness anymore. At number 44, we do have Rutgers, and Rutgers kind of struggling lately. I feel like they've been dropping uh, recently, but still a very good defensive team. They have a lot of potential, um, but I, I think they've been falling off a little bit as of late. At number 45, I do have Mississippi State, another really good defensive team along there with Rutgers. Um, at number 46, I do have Penn State. I think that they solidified themselves to be a March Madness team uh, more than likely with a good win over Maryland uh, yesterday. At number 47, I do have USC. USC, I think, should be a tournament team as well. Um, they've been playing pretty good as of late ever since they got upset by, I believe it was Washington State or Stanford, someone like that. I don't remember who it was, but they got upset by somebody ever since then. They've been playing pretty good basketball. At number 48, we do have Oklahoma State, 
and Oklahoma State, they picked up a big win this week. And now they head into the Big 12 tournament. I think they have to definitely beat Oklahoma in the first round. And we'll see if they can get another win after that. If they do beat Oklahoma, I think they're probably in March Madness, but it, it might be close. At number 49, I do have North Carolina. And at 50, I do have Michigan. Um, North Carolina did beat Michigan on the season, so I feel like that kind of works out. And North Carolina and Michigan, I do feel like are both kind of on the bubble. Um, but let me know what you guys think about my top 50. A lot of these teams can get switched around. It does get kind of messy with, you know, some of these teams, but... I spent a lot of time trying to work out the messiness. I didn't get it cleaned up all the way. I feel like it's kind of impossible to get kind of like some perfect rankings here. But let me know what you guys think. These are going to be the final power rankings of the season. We're going to have still a bunch of college basketball March Madness coverage coming out um, here on the channel. But we're going to be making brackets. We're going to be having the conference tournament predictions coming out later on today so look for a bunch of videos to come out later on today of all the conference tournament picks and yeah guys thank you so much for watching i'm out